rope came on a Thursday, I believe it was. I was gardening, planting bulbs, freesias and gladiola. And there she was. Well, I say she, but I know that's purely an act of anthropomorphism. A rope is a rope, an it, not a she. I know this to be true, as true as night follows day, as sunshine follows rain. But there was something about her, this rope, that begged a human identification. It was a kind of great blonde beauty that you usually don't find in that kind of sizal. She was a, a large rope, neatly coiled, not what you would find lying around in a, in a garden, which she was lying around in the northeast corner of my neighbor Dorothy's yard. It was at that moment that Dorothy came out of her back door and I, I called over the clematis covered fence Oh, Dorothy, I said, that's a lovely rope, doing some hauling. <laughs> rope, she said. <laughs> she seemed surprised. She had no idea where this rope came from. She figured it was probably left by the workmen who were, who were doing the repairs on, on Virgil's roof. Oh, Virgil is our neighbor. He's directly to the north. Oh, a fine, fine elderly gentleman with a... Uh, <laughs> strapping walk uh, despite a gangrenous toe brought on by recurrent gout. Well, I hurried to Virgil's and I found him outside the, the foot soaking in a bucket. Um, I asked him about the rope. He said it wasn't his, which I somehow suspected. And it, his suggestion was to, to ask around and maybe even to put up some small signs. Well, I hurried back to Dorothy's. Uh, a mystery was afoot, a, a, a mystery rope. I saw Dorothy and I in the grand tradition of Holmes and Watson, Drew and Bess, and Nancy Drew, and her red-haired, freckled face cousin Bess. And I, you know, I, I really would like to be Nancy, and I somehow thought that Dorothy could be Bess. And of course, Dorothy as Bess is somewhat of a stretch. Dorothy is African American, and there has been a a perceptible strain, long, long strain in our relationship since the old O.J. trial. So I guess I was on my own. I had to act fast. The forecast had called for rain. Uh, rain, moisture, mold, deterioration. I, I had to get her inside. Well, I waited until a little later when I knew Dorothy was gone and I scaled her fence. And I went in and there she was, rope, up close, somehow even more radiant. Her brilliant luster had a, oh, undeniable sophistication. Well, this was no ordinary rope. She had been places. Well, all this was done none, none too soon, I might add. There was a smell, a sweet, sickly smell, like tissue right before it becomes necrotic mold. Well, I, I quickly got her into the house. I laid down some towels with an old rag that I got from the garage. I gently wiped her compromised areas. Fortunately, any damage was only superficial, and I, I felt assured that she was still structurally stable. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I wasn't going to keep her. Oh, no, no, not at all, not at all. I fully intended to find her rightful owner. But I didn't think there was any harm in letting her sleep on the floor beside me, at least until Avery got back, which, well, according to one of his last postcards at the time, was only going to be another six weeks or so. Um, 
he and the team and his assistant, the lovely Miss Holly, had just uh, finished clearing not all, but almost all of the landmines from the Laos-Cambodia border, and they were just about ready to lay down the foundations for the Taco Bell and Target stores. I, I derived a great sense of security from her on those nights. We would watch television, <laughs> late night infomercials, and leaning down, feeling her strong, plated fiber. Uh, maybe it sounds strange, <laughs> hopeful even, <laughs> but I'd like to feel those feelings were reciprocal. That Rope was also grateful for this company, this respite, temporary shelter. <laughs> then one night, towards the middle of of October, the terrible incident occurred. Dorothy's only daughter, Rhinesha, had been out with her boyfriend and she was walking on the ridge and she suddenly lost her footing and fell down the ravine. A strike team was assembled. Captain Dan, he stood atop the fire engines shouting orders. It was utter, utter chaos. Three attempts had been made to, to lift the adolescent out of the ravine but the cord that was being used wasn't able to hold the weight. Damn, said Captain Dan, what I need is an inch and a quarter sizal rope with 10,000 pound tensile strength and no linear expansion. My heart stopped. I raced back to the house. Rope, in anticipation of the role she could play, was already by the front door. I, I leaned down, I said to her, are you sure, girl, I said. Are you sure you want to do this? She shook her head. At least what I think was her head. And I said, are, are you sure that you can do this? There's so much risk involved. And then I think she said that if we didn't get Rhinesha out by morning, malignant hypothermia could set in. Well, good God. I, I picked her up. We raced out to Captain Dan. Captain Dan whipped around and was nearly felled. Good God, he said. Huh, I haven't seen a hank like that since my Navy days. Tenderly, he, he took her into his arms and they both disappeared into the indigo night. Six nerve-wracking hours later, the anguished ordeal was over. Rhinesha was brought home on a stretcher, hardly hurt. And Rope was right behind her on a little stretcher of her own, exhausted and frayed. I quickly got her into the house and I, I bathed her in a tub of warm buttermilk. Spring came and brought its gentle breezes. Then one day, as mysteriously as she had come, Rope was gone vanished. Oh, I looked for her everywhere. Oh, oh, I even put up some small signs. No, no, I'm not bitter or resentful because she's gone. No. After all, what a day may bring, a day may also take away. I think about her. Rope. Well, of course I do. Companionship of that kind doesn't come every day. <laughs> but you know, when I think about it, in all the chances of life, we could have missed each other altogether, and we didn't. No. We sure didn't. <laughs>